and welcome to Big Brother's <gasps> Bit on the Psych. The only television show that entertains, and I was going to say educates, but what a, obviously not. What a woman. I feel sexy tonight, Ryan. Well, I, I feel sexy. I mean, he does. Uh, but listen, get ready, because for the next hour, we're going to be unravelling the complex minds of our house. That's not going to take any more than five minutes, is it? Either, Surely. No. Luckily, we'll also be looking at, uh, at a momentous week that gave us girl power. Inspector Winston investigates a living morgue for dead housemates. And even more frightening than that, Christopher's crappy new haircut. It all fall. <laughs> I can't believe she's butchered him. Uh, I'm not forgetting the unlikely pairing of Danielle and Winston. Oh, hey! Going on here. Hello. Uh, more on that later. But now, like Kimberly and Stephen, there are three people in this relationship. So what? please welcome the glue that holds us together. It's Louisa Zitzer! Yeah! Who's this? Who's this? I am liking the hair too. Yeah. Like my new hair. Yeah, it's lovely. I feel a bit naked. It's all gone. Well, and we can see your nipples, but other oh, than that, it's, it's a oh, lovely night. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with smuggling peanuts for Ireland if that's what the lady chooses to do. And that's what she has I'm chosen. I'm going to sit like this now the whole night. You look lovely tonight, Ian. Thanks very much. <laughs> you look really, Thank really good. Look, what she's saying is I look shit every week, but I'm yeah. going to take it as a compliment. No, Thank you. No, you look really nice. Thanks for the compliment Because normally you wear those, well. like, grandpa jumpers. <laughs> what have you made of this week, Louisa? It's been interesting, hasn't it? I quite liked the, um... <laughs> Win I like Winston as his little inspector man. And what is going on with Danielle and Winston? We'll talk about that in a bit, yeah. but that's just making me laugh. I, know. I just keep watching it and laughing all the time and her little looks. Yeah. So it's like that. <laughs> Helen uh, and Ashley, of course, went head to head in the girl power uh, task. Louisa, who do you think came out on top? Um, I think Ashley came out on top. Yeah, uh, yeah. Definitely, without a doubt. But what's interesting is that. Um, Ashley's been a little bit of a bitch, but I quite like her for it. Whereas when Helen was a bitch, I didn't like her, and I feel quite bad. But um, I'm liking Ashley's new fiery, fiery Well, temperament. Ashley's become a bit of a bitch, uh, and, and Helen's... It feels like, to me, she's made a real effort this week not to, not to lose her rag and blow mm. her cool a bit. Do you reckon? Yeah, I do, do you know what? I do think, I think, you know, and Big Brother's helped there as well by giving her that task. We're going to look at that a yeah. bit later on as well. But, you know, I do think she is trying. I do think she's trying to... You can see her fighting her it, though. Like, yeah, she's completely she's fighting, fighting it. Then I just think she knows that, you know, she's, she's out next time she misbehaves. So we're probably not seeing the real Helen, because we all know what the real well, Helen's when that, like. When she was in the morgue um, with everyone else, uh, they seemed to be getting along a lot better while she weren't in the house. Um, did you prefer the house when the dead ones were dead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I liked it when they were dead. I think it was actually a nicer house. It was quite a nice environment for once, because it's always a bit... There's a lot of tension. There's always, like bad energy and I think when we removed those guys I think just taking four of them out I think it could have been any four but especially Helen it was good for the house well listen something we also saw uh, was Kimberly and Stephen have their ups and downs this Ooh. week a little smoochy smooch <laughs> if you don't mind um, okay. is there going to be a future for them too because we I just said there's three people in that relationship I just um, I want to know what what Kimberly's boyfriend's thinking well, it's an alleged boyfriend. Alleged boyfriend. There was the weird alleged. bit, there was the say? weird bit, wasn't there, in tonight's episode when Stephen's going, do you want to look at my pictures? I suppose She's so. Like, Whatever. Have a look at this. <laughs> oh, yeah. These are my favourite people in the world. Oh, yeah, that's, she so couldn't she care said, oh, less yeah. about his book. And no-one very... likes other people's photos. They're boring. But she's... They are boring. It's like when you have to see family faces. But she's just very... Like, a st she just can't read her at all, can you? Well, no, but talking of photos, not family photos, I liked him when they were playing that bit of Guess Who. Oh, you yeah, know, with the good. baby photos. Um, so yeah. before we get to our favourite moments, we're going to play Guess the Baby Photo, Ooh. just like they did tonight. So, yes. right. Lulu, can you guess who this is? We're going to give you a little clue from right about now. Stop it there. Oh. Stephen. Stephen? Yeah. OK, let's have a little look. Is he in Lee? Is he in you... Is it Ian Lang? You were really you, cute. At, Look yeah, at I was you. eight. Right, first of all, you're a prick. Where did you get that from? I, you're in trouble. I thought Mom, it was me because it looks a bit ginger. My mum can't even pick up Channel 5, so she doesn't even know I do this as a job. <laughs> and what do you mean, I used to look cute. I, I still look cute. You no, don't. look at your little face and you had really nice eyelashes. Right, you're listen, I'm moving boy. on from baby photos. I'm bored of it now. Right, uh, let's get to our favourite moments of the week. Lulu, this is your one. Let's have a look.
up over a moment. Obviously, that was my favourite clip. Love to see a few naked men. But the reason why it was my favourite clip is because Danielle was so into it. She loved it. She forgot that she was a Catholic nun for a minute, didn't she? <laughs> she's not she quite, she's a nun. Well, she almost could be a nun. There was a picture of her in the papers this week. Pour, did you see this? Pouring water onto her vagina. Did you see her this picture? Her potato. Yeah. She, li she likes getting wet. Well, she was obviously hot. What's your favourite bit, right? Yeah, let's have a look, quick. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, you're all right, you're all right. What happened? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did that happen? She just appeared. What happened? 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 What Oh, oh my god! Jesus <laughs> Lord! What the? Oh shit, and now she's had the shittest day. You all right? <laughs> You've had a bad day. <laughs> what the fuck? Do you know what? Do you know what it was for me? Yeah. It's the fact that her acting was so yeah. shit. Terrible. But yeah. it's the fact that we all knew watching, and everyone's like, oh, she's had the worst day. Yeah. <laughs> had the shittest day. Like, genuine, genuine. Let's have a look at your yeah, one. Yeah, go on. Some of you may call me the main man. Some of you may also call me the uh, Don. Others may refer to me as the hunk of the house. However, I stand up in front of you ladies today as myself, Winston. Oh. I have a dream that a guy can walk in here and tear shit up. I have a dream that a man can stand up in front of five gorgeous girls and get saved. I have a dream that all men throughout the world can treat girls with 100% respect forevermore. I have a dream that a man can just be a man. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> It's, it's hardly Martin Luther King, is it? You no, know, yes. in, in terms oh. of great speeches about dreams, that's not the best one. I quite liked it. Do you I know what? I think it. we're looking at... Uh, we, he's going to get to the final. Potential winner, I think. You as reckon? Well. I think so, yeah, because he's so thick. He might just make it right I to be the winner. I don't think he's thick. Oh, come on. He's as, he's as thick as he's a brick. He's thick. Well, you think he's really intelligent? Well, but compared to you, possibly. I don't... But compared to the rest of the world, there ain't nothing in there. Well, listen, <laughs> listen, we're going to move on. Don't think we've forgotten about Danielle and Winston uh, because we'll be analysing all of that a little bit Plus, later on. Plus, your uh, latest evictee will be sat between me and two of the best psychs in the Is biz. Is Judy James in? No, it's, sorry. Do it's Dr Funky. Oh. Uh, see you in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Psych and like a therapist couch, we're here to make you feel comfortable. Yeah, unlike Danielle's attempts to seduce Winston. It's vile. It's vile. <laughs> now, it's about time we met up with the psychs. First up, it's psychotherapist Rachel Morris. Yes, right. <laughs> and she's back again. again. <laughs> it's Dr. Funke. <laughs> Just listen to I'm them. getting them. We love your week. <laughs> uh, and finally, you brought Mark and Christopher to tears. It's your fourth evictee. Give it up for Matthew! Yeah. I'm liking... I'm liking your shirt a lot, Matthew. It's a it was supposed shirt. to be my eviction oh, shirt. Oh, no. Well, it but then I decided that if I wore it, I'd probably be evicted. So hang on a minute. I got evicted anyway. So you were wearing the non-eviction shirt and you still got evicted? Yeah. And by wearing this, I you're hoping... I thought it was bad luck wearing it. Bad juju. I didn't well, tend to go. Well, you so look very, very smart. You look lovely, you. but yeah. has, it, has it been, obviously, first 24 hours out? It's been okay. Yeah, I kind of don't mind being away from Helen and some of them now. Yeah. It's a bit depressing as well. <laughs> you look a bit sad. You look a little bit, I am a bit tearful. Sad. I don't know, to be honest. It's weird. I mean, um, it wasn't really that fun most of the time, to be honest. But I'm obviously sad to say bye to some of my friends in there, especially mm. Mark. Rach, where do you think it went wrong from that? Um, well, I think you, you, you know, Matthew, you kind of went in saying, look, I'm arrogant, I'm confident, I'm entitled, I look down on the world, and, you know, I figured that they're probably not the British public's most favourite set of qualifications for Big Brother. Yeah. So, in the, some, some senses, I'm amazed you lasted as long as you did, and I think what kind of saved you was that you were incredibly reasonable. You and Mark, who thought it, were actually the two most reasonable voices in the house, and you very often echoed everything that we were saying here. Uh, so, we really enjoyed you being there, and I'm sorry mm -hmm. that you went. Thank you, I, I mean, I, I was a little bit shocked. I thought Ash would go, but then I thought about it. Why would Matthew not go? I think there's what did Matthew represent in the house? Whereas Ash had a bad week, but he had a good week this week. And he's, you know, you think about who, the demographics, who is actually picking up the phone to phone 
to save somebody, or not to, to, to evict. Mm. And it's more likely they... I couldn't work out why he got booted out, because Ash has been a wanker, and Matt's been all right. He, he, yeah. Matt's been all right. But, but Ash went in in the house and he was kind of like one of the favourites because of what happened yeah. that he became... Matthew, it was the girl's decision to put you up for eviction. Do you think that decision was fair? I don't really know what is fair, to be honest. I knew I'd be up by them. I knew that Helen dominated that group, so obviously Helen kind of had the power and they kind of walk all over Ashley and Danielle. I didn't really see what went on, but I'm pretty sure Helen that... Helen didn't really have yeah. the power. Yeah. Ashley, they Ashley. took the power away. Yeah. It was Ashley that had mm. the power in there. No, but they saved Chris and Chris was going to be saved anyway. Louisa, did you... But did I don't you know, apparently it was between Ash and Chris anyway. Do you think they made like, the right decision? Oh. What, putting Matt up? Yeah, sure, why not? I think, um, or kicking you out. I think you don't deserve to be here. I think Ash should be here. I wasn't your biggest fan at the start, no. but actually you really... <laughs> I hear you were You on really, um... <laughs> I really want It's all theatre and pantomime, anyway, Matthew. It's all theatre. Um, I never said anything about you, I'm not that bothered sure? about you. Yeah, um, oh! oh! You saw what happened. Oh, oh, well, you went out your way to that tweet. Oh, it was, oh, listen, wow. it was obvious that there was one housemate that Matthew didn't see eye to eye with. That, of course, was, uh, was Helen. Uh, Rachel, despite her not being very popular with the public, was making an enemy of Helen a bad move. She did did have a lot of power in the house. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I, no, I don't think it was a bad move at all. I think the mistake you made was you held on to that grudge long mm. after Big Brother audience had gone. What? That was weeks ago. Because a, a day feels like a week here. Mm. So you know, it's like you're still harping on about it. And I think that was what what did you do, a disservice. But this is talking about this just quickly during the seance. Um, uh, Matthew asked Helen whether he thought that she was a malicious mm. bitch. Funky, do you think that that was maybe dragging it out a little I bit too long? I totally agree with Rachel. I think that was dragging it out because we saw a different side to Helen. So you brought it all back again and that made her like you were still carrying on the field. Hey, I've got a question. Mm. How's your mum doing? Oh, we mom. love your mum. Yeah, your mum's a yeah. fox. Is she? she is. She's. I don't know how to interpret that. To interpret that, in that you can start calling me dad at some point soon. She's oh, a babe. Please, man. <laughs> She's a babe. Right. That anyway. is all what you need. Moving on swiftly. Yeah, moving on very swiftly. Uh, two housemates that were upset to see Matthew go were Mark and Christopher. Uh, Funky, do you think that his eviction is going to change the house dynamic in there? No, I don't think it's going to change the house dynamic. Only thing I do think that's going to happen is that Mark and Christopher may form an alliance. Because I think Matthew was their glue. Because they don't really get on. But I think now that Matthew's gone, they will have to form an alliance. Right, do you think he should have maybe tried a little bit harder to integrate within the group? And then the no, I think Matthew, my experience was that he in integrated really well mm. with the people he chose yeah. to integrate with. Yeah. Um, otherwise, he would have had to have done a jarle and just moved yeah. around seeing who she could mm -hmm. get acceptance yeah. from. And yeah, you I weren't hypocritical. That. And I think that stood in your favour and showed that you were who you said you were. Now, Matthew once shared the power with Toya and they vetoed Ash, Marlon and Stephen's votes with Toya receiving the most backlash. Funky, did, did Matthew do the right thing by stepping back, do you think? Well, come on, he was with Toya. He, he, he did what he had to do and Toya took control of that. But I think what, was, what Matthew could have done is stood up a bit more for your... Because you voted too for yeah. it, but you kind of stepped back and maybe that was his way of just coping. We don't know what was the it, dynamics... Was it Matthew? You just we had our reasons for doing it, but it got to the point where people were overanalyzing everything so much. People were too thick to understand the reason why we did it. And I felt like it went on to the point where I was starting to question why we did it. And I just couldn't be bothered for it. I think with Toya, she's really articulate, she's very outspoken. She made her point. I didn't really feel like I needed to say anymore. Mm -hmm. And then I saw it all took off and I thought, well, I'm not getting involved in this because <coughs> everyone's made themselves like an absolute twat in this house tonight. That's where I went. Well, listen, finally, um, Matthew seems to be the only housemate who remembered that Big Brother is a game. Uh, thank you. <laughs> what? Um, I'm sorry, Chris was the secret power housemate. Well, I knew there it you go, you knew it. But, it Funky, do you think... crying. Oh, you, but actually, Matt, I'm going to ask you this. Do you not think that you should have maybe spent less time thinking it was a game mm. and more time just sitting back and enjoying it? Probably so. I pretty much hated the last week. And the week before. So I think, uh, I think probably, people probably saw me being a miserable, grumpy old fart, so people probably didn't want to watch me anymore. Do you agree, babe? I, no, I don't think you were miserable. I think you had your opinion. I think sometimes what I, what I couldn't catch is the emotion. Because sometimes you say things and you have quite a straight face, and I was like, where's the emotion attached to that? But I don't think, you know, everyone's in the house is bitching. Everyone in the house is bitching. Some more than others, but everyone's bitching. They said, give them a good bit of a clap, that was a good bit of chat there. I love a Saturday. Okay. I love a Saturday. I'm really right. intelligent. Uh, let's, have, let's have a little look at this explosive. <laughs> it's like if someone said to me, if anyone in the whole house, who do you believe is playing the game? The only one person I could possibly say would be Chris. Mm. Because I don't know Chris. I don't understand Chris. I don't think he is. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm guaranteed to bet a million pounds on it, he's not. I just think generally that's... I think he's just being Maybe himself. Maybe he's that type of person. From what, how I'm reading this is that he's very... I find it very hard to open up to people. 
and then any time he's potentially emotionally vulnerable, he will defend it very well, if that makes sense. That's how I'm reading this. Not, I don't think he's a game player. I don't get reason, him. The, the I don't, I, sometimes I feel like we've had one really good chat and it, I kind of understood it and then something happens and I don't, so... See, I have good chats with him. Like, I've had a couple of chats with him and stuff, but I just... I just feel uncomfortable. And there was a comment that he made once, which I didn't like, which I overheard, which I overheard him say. It was about the cool kids being up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh you all right? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Stimbly. <sighs> Hash. So over it, man. There's only one couple's name on everyone's lips. Ladies and gents, I give you... Wanyel. <laughs> what sort of guys do you go for? Don't like lads, lads. Don't know if you're one of them or not. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Probably never dated someone like me, so... Have you? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to get to know you more. Yeah. I think you're a nice boy. R-A-L. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoy talking to you, it's good. Yeah. Is that it? Huh? Is that it? Is that all you kind of feel towards me? <laughs> there isn't definitely, there isn't traction. What the funk is going on there? You had to use that line. I think, I mean, I, I might be the only one, but I'm really enjoying watching Danielle getting a bit flirt. Coming out of her shell, because she's trying to put on this whole religious thing, and then she's contradicting it with talking about oral sex and not having sex, and bringing on Winston, enticing him. I, I actually like seeing that side of it. I know lots of people are cringing, but... It's I'm, really cringing. You find it there. cringing, man? We were in there, we were living with them. It's just really... Danielle's really awkward to watch and observe. You she are, is, too. No, I think you're really Oh, yeah, I know I'm watch. awkward to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I've already watched enough. I suspect Matthew feels awkward she to is, be. She is, yeah. you know what, in all fairness, though, she is a bit of a... Oh, she, she's really hard to take on the outside, <laughs> because what we know on the outside and what we're seeing of her, and then it seems like sometimes she's slipping, don't you think? Into the... Because she does mucky pictures, don't she? Oh, and I yeah. spent... <laughs> I spent a lot of time on the internet this week researching it, and I, I've almost I'm concluded sure. my move research. Ahead, move I've on. almost concluded my research. <laughs> a little bit more needs to be done. Now, it wasn't just Winston who had a dream this week. Danielle's been dreaming about him. Yeah. Rachel, could that have been what kickstarted this this whole thing? Um, I think what originally kickstarted it was the poem that he read to her, and yeah. then after the yeah. poem, <laughs> oh, that sounded really heavy. Sorry, I got the wrong card. I just <laughs> tossed it behind me because I don't that care. That was your iPad. Yes. Yeah. Um, no, I think she. It was when he did his poem to her oh, when, when awesome. she was at the finishing school, yeah. and she went all fluttery, yeah. and and yeah. after that, I think then she had a sexy dream about him. Then there was all the the everything. Yeah, yeah. and then I can't I think it all came from there. Mate, yeah. you've lived with them. Have they got anything in common? They're both from Essex. She's from Essex? Yes. She's from what? Essex. No, she lives in Essex. She lives in Essex! <laughs> That's not an Essex accent! <laughs> <laughs> um, no, they don't have anything in common. What do you mean I thought I knew every person <laughs> in Essex? <laughs> Where? What? I don't know. I need to get, can we get her housemate pack here now? Because <laughs> I need to know how close to her house she is. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know what's going on. They have nothing in common. They're both, They're both a stick of shit. That's, that, that, was, yeah. that would probably yeah. take some way, wouldn't it? Yeah. Winston isn't fit. He's well, not, though. No, Winston is not fit. Exactly. He's not, he's not, he's not highly intelligent, but, he's but he not. does play on a fact. Like, he's perceptive. He knows what's going on. Mm. Like, no one would have found out who those assassins were apart from him. No, I don't know that, 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 but we're, we're going to talk about this house a bit later on, but Rach, just very, very quickly, um, what did you make of her flirting technique? Uh, I think that it was really interesting for me to watch because it's the first time I've looked at Danielle and thought, oh my God, you are actually kind of what you say you are. She was undeveloped, oh. immature. Her, her flirting technique was incredibly uh, childlike and mm. delicate. She's after, she wants somebody to cuddle her and give her a snog and walk like around the garden was, holding hands. It's like she and was he, encouraging it and then yes. what we've seen in tonight's yeah, but she's show is that she's like, no. But now, it's because listen. she's not encouraging the sexual side. I'm about to interrupt you. Twitter and digital spy, have your say because I'm interrupting people, but it's what I've got to do. When Kim 
Kim stepped in the shower with him, all hell broke loose. Yes. But now he's sharing a bed with Danielle. Funky, should Danielle be worried about a backlash? Ian, I'm so glad you brought a that up. A splashback? <laughs> a blowback? No, but that's, no, but that's a Backsack really... Backsack and crack? Stop it! Yeah, Sorry. Listen. No, but that's a really good point, because everyone went crazy when Kimberly went in the shower. But you know why? Yeah. Danielle's not a threat to the other women. Kimberly was a threat to Helen. That's why she had that outrage about... So no one is... Yeah. No one's actually... They know it's happening, but they don't actually care. I or nobody could. remembers who tomorrow yeah, is. That's I was sorry for some other Yeah, but they've been in there for a month, and when you're in there, you forget everything. She was yeah. there yesterday. But Winston wants gone. to have a relationship. He said well, it on his Winston's really needed. Right, this is what's going on with you. Winston said, I want to fall in love in this house. Is this what we're watching? No, we no. cheated Winston's Winston really out needy. of his love, didn't we, when we took Tamara. You know, Winston just, like, effectuates over every girl in that house. He's really needy. He's really insecure, actually. I think he just likes attention from But is he still talking? And he's yeah. gagging, he's he's talking. gagging for so it as well. Is he still talking about tomorrow? Is he still talking about tomorrow? Is she, is she her he's going to be like, yeah, I miss her, you know. Listen, the thing... He told me he felt like he was choosing between her and Kimberly in the first week. <laughs> yeah. I don't right. know if that was shown. T and he's I got... think he's, he's gagging for it. He's... he's, he's the thing is, he, he may... You know, he's beautiful, he's a little bit thick, or, or not, that's, that's debatable, but... He flattered her by writing a wonderful poem about her, uh, and I'd like to recite a few lines. Go on. These are some of the lines. <clears throat> Got a hard on when I saw her in the shower, concealing in my pants like the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> that is beautiful, isn't it, ladies? Isn't it? Yeah! Okay. In the beginning, she despised that kind of talk because she pretends that she don't know about sex. Yeah. Is she a bit more relaxed now? Do you think? I think she is more relaxed, and I think, yes, at the beginning she wanted to portray something that we knew she wasn't, and now we're seeing her true colours. Do you know she says something? I'm a bit bipolar. I mean, it's a serious mental health condition, yeah. but when you think about bipolar, it's like your moods switch up and down. So maybe yeah. she's saying, I'm showing this side of you, and I'm showing the other side of you. I don't mm. think that's the case. I just think she's a bit of a hypocrite. Yeah, she is. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. sorry to say it. I'm trying not to have an opinion. She's trying but... to find herself, Ryan. Yeah. yeah, She's but, trying to find herself. But they're too very but quite everyone extreme in there, people. Everyone in there is so confused about who they are. Louisa. Yeah. Like, everyone's insecure. How do you see this relationship progressing, if at all? I'd like to see Winston get deep and dirty with Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, she <laughs> won't. Come <laughs> on here. <laughs> Matt, what do you think? Oh, I think so everyone funny. secretly is hoping he'll take the, the V from her. That's right. But, um, oh, God, I really hope for her because she doesn't. I don't think I could deal with it. I, can't I think she's going to tease him. Oh, I think she's teasing him. You reckon? Yeah. Yeah. She's going to get to that point, nope, can't do it. I can't do it. But what impact would it have yeah. sort of on the, on the rest of the house if this does happen? If they get together, mm -hmm. what are the other housemates going to be like? I don't really the think that, right I, the, the housemates are doing their own thing. I think, that, look, Kimberly and Stephen, that's the one that we think probably is going to happen yeah, first. Yeah, but this could potentially happen. Like, you know, it's getting there. It's almost happening. It's not, what was going on at the end of the, tonight's show? No. No. It's not the first time it's happened in the Big Brother house, is it? No. Rach, what do you think? Uh, I think that uh, I really hope for Danielle's sake that nothing actually does happen mm. because it's really funny that you mentioned the bipolar thing. Yeah. I was thinking about, um, the, you know, how far removed her home life is, you know, getting, mm. needing acceptance from all of her uh, home life, her, mm. her Catholic church, her family, and needing acceptance from people in the house. It's mm. meaning that she's kind of really ricocheting. If anything does happen between them, she's going to find it really difficult to <coughs> deal with the fallout yeah. emotionally, mm. mentally, mm. about, you know, what, what have they seen? It's I going to be will. something to watch. Thank mm. you. Everyone. Mm. Still to come, our Sykes will attempt to untangle Ashley's mind. Plus, our weekly dip into the murky waters of Diary Roman Cut. See you in a bit. Don't come near me! Welcome back to Bit on the Psycho Show. So highbrow, so sharp, and so insightful. That studio audience ain't got a clue what's going on. Look at their faces. Look, nothing. No, nothing. Uh, now the crowd were chanting for her. You're going to read my lines, Riley? Yeah, Val. Fine. All right. I'll go and sit down. Here's down, shall Ashley's I? story so far. I'm sorry, Ian. No worries, Ray. Oh, uh, this is Louis. I'm quite bubbly and really girly and fun. Um, he's got like a hot water bottle inside him. I always sleep with him. I love dogs and animals. He sleeps with me every single night. So you're feeling happy? Very happy. <laughs> you are Ashley. You're not afraid to say your mind. 
be yourself. Don't ever allow yourself to get lost in this house, Ashley. I would tear shit up in this house if I had that power, you know. Hell's a waste of oxygen and carbon dioxide. She's vile. Okay. Ireland's fucking oh, dick. Because you are a fucking slag and she has no class. Skinny little prick, skinny little prick, skinny little prick. She's the least classy woman I fucking know. What about you, you ugly looking bitch? She is an absolute mouthpiece. I wonder what she'd look like if she didn't have all her work done. Which housemate is the least trustworthy, the biggest game player, the biggest liar? Ashley. 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 Oh, Kimberly has such a problem. <laughs> Stephen could be doing so much better. I think she's a pathetic excuse of a woman. I like feel like I've made some sort of evil plan. Skinny little prick, skinny little prick, skinny little prick, skinny little prick. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to let him go. Wrong person, it's me. <laughs> but back to Ashley, uh, she's barely into adulthood, but earlier this week she showed the rest of the house who is boss, and her evil plan to get rid of Ash backfired, and now the sweet young girl has been unmasked. But what I'm quite surprised at, Rachel, yeah. is she seemed so innocent at the beginning. What happened? Where's the transformation there? Well, I, I don't know that did she seem innocent or did we just project innocence onto her because she's got long me. blonde hair and a teddy bear. Well, I think that is what happened. Mm. I think what she did was she sat back, she was overwhelmed by lots of very loud, mm. big grown-up personalities until somebody gave her permission to speak. Right. And I think Toya gave her permission to be fierce um, and then Danielle gave her permission to be moral mm. and I think now Chris is giving her permission uh, um, to, to, I don't know exactly what. <laughs> amen, amen to that, sister. Amen. We'll, <laughs> funky, we'll see how that goes. Funky, what did you make of her in the first week? Could you see the transition happening, or has it been there from the start? I think it's been there from the start, and I think she was cautious, and she didn't just go into the group. She was kind of analysing who she would stick with. She's someone that likes to have one-on-one -on -one friendships, and she's mm. actually admitted that. And I think, is that a bad thing? And now she's come out of her shell, we're all saying, oh, God, she should be out of the house. And No, I think... Ashley, an 18-year-old, has a master plan, backfired, but there's a lot about her that we should all appreciate. Make sure she's 18. Louisa, do you think the other housemates have underestimated her because she is so young? Yeah, definitely. I think that when you are that age or when you are younger and you've got older people, they always underestimate you. But good, I think really good power. I'm really enjoying watching Ashley and her journey. Mm. Matthew, what, what do you journey. think? Why do you think the crowd were chanting <laughs> to get her out the other night? I was quite shocked, to be fair. I think that... People maybe don't like the fact that she's not very direct and says things behind people's backs. Um, but I like her. I think it's quite funny when she slags people off. <laughs> uh, she was very much in control of the girl power debate. She saved Stephen, Chris and Marlon. Yet her plan to get Ash out backfired. Funky, does she still hold any power in the house now that he's escaped eviction? As it currently is, no. But you know, Big Brother, they can do a task where she can get power again. And yes, I worry for Ashley next week, because if it stands as it is where, you know, there's no power in the house, she'll probably be up for nomination. Well, Kimberly and um, Helen uh, accused her during <coughs> the science of being the least genuine and the biggest liar in the house. Louisa, are they right? I don't know why they called her a liar, actually. I don't think she's a liar. Um, I think that she's not what we maybe think she is, which is maybe why they said the least genuine. But I, I really like her. I think it's just really funny, because she's so cute looking, and she's got like the little teddy bear, and she's like, you're a bitch, he's a dick. But she never, <laughs> she doesn't say it to anyone's face either, which is kind of annoying. It would be better if she was just like, you're a dick. Well, someone who knows Ashley very well is her friend Tara, who I believe is on the line now. Hi, Tara. Hello, everyone. Hi, Hello, Tara. Tara. Hi, Tara. Hi. 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 She's loving it. <laughs> Tara. Tara, thanks for oh, calling in tonight, lovely. babes. Um, Tara, how do you think um, she's going to feel about the calls to get her out last night during the eviction? It's like water off a duck's back for Ashley. She doesn't let anything get to her. Um, she's previously mentioned on the show that she's been very badly bullied most of her life by her peers. Therefore, I think if she really cared what everyone else thought about her, she wouldn't survive the house. And um, she clearly showed that she can. Is she, is she the ice cream, though, that everyone's sort of making her out to be? It's not that Ashley's emotionless. She just takes no prisoners. If she thinks something, she'll say it. I think the public are confused in her lack of expression as being ice cold, but isn't that understandable after everything she's been through? Tara, we've seen, um, you know, a transition in her over the past week. Um, yeah. But what we haven't seen is her go to someone's face and tell them what she really thinks. Is there more to come from her? Are we going to see that? Ashley is better one-on-one. -on -one. In a group, she always tends to sit back and watch, you know, assess the situation. But what's happening here is 
she's watching everyone else crumble around her and she'll rise up with victory. I mean, if you remember back to her VT, she said, I might be ditzy, but I'm not stupid. And that she definitely is not. Tara, thank you for calling in tonight. Babe, give it up for Tara, everyone. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you, Tara. Thank you, Tara. Very well spoken. She was doing a telephone voice. We all have one. Now, during the seance, <laughs> she also made the cutting comment that Kimberly had a problem and Stephen could do much better. Rachel, could the mask have given her a false sense of security? I think, actually, it could uh, have given her a false sense of security. Anyone who's done any kind of drama work where they've used a mask knows that you can abs you kind of mm. absorb the mask. And she chose a beautiful, yeah. uh, very powerful mask. It's a lovely mask. It's a very catty mask, isn't it? It's a very kind of, you know, Catwoman mask. Maybe. Mm. Uh, t uh, tonight we saw in the diary room clutching the trusted, infamous teddy bear Funky. Oh. Could this be a clever trick just to put the fool people into thinking that she's so nice and sweet and lovely, she's got a teddy bear? Ian, you don't like her, do you? Uh, do you know what? I've not really made my mind up oh. about her. She's, it's, it, it, I'm erring on the side of liking her more than a significant number of other people. She finds it as comfort. She hasn't gone in the house to look for a relationship. Mm. Kimberly and the others will have comfort for the, from the guys in the house. This is her comfort. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, Helen said that <laughs> Ashley and Daniel were both fine on their own, but not when they're together. Louisa, are they, are they dragging each other down, do you think? Um, I think it's a bit like, they're sometimes a bit like witches together, aren't yeah. they? And it's actually nice to see them um, apart. But you do, you know, in that house, you do just connect with someone and you do grip to each other. And I think that if one of them goes, the other one will really struggle. Matthew? And if Danielle goes, I think Ashley will struggle more than Danielle. What do you reckon, Matthew, Ashley and Danielle? Yeah, they definitely back each other up quite a lot. Yeah. Um, but I think they contradict themselves too. Um, oh. Yeah, I think one of them will go is the other one will be. Well, well yeah. earlier on we were talking about um, Danielle and Winston growing quite close. Uh, mm. Rach, do you think Ashley's friendship with Danielle could suffer if we do see that progress? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, Ashley, Ashley is 18 and one of the kind of markers of being young is that you see things in terms of black and white. Yeah. It's really simple. It is or it isn't. Danielle has kind of said that she is this thing and now she's going against it. She'll call her a hypocrite and she will separate, separate herself from uh, Danielle, especially now Chris has made himself right. available as another part. Well, this is what I'm saying, Chris, she's got, she's practically built an ally in Chris, hasn't she? Like, where, where has that come from? Because we haven't really seen that from the beginning, have we? Well, we I had a conversation I, about yeah, this earlier. Oh, I bet you two <laughs> did. <laughs> we do like I, to. I, I think Chris is so clever. Yeah. I think Chris has realised that Ashley had a bit of power to do with, you know, what happened last week. Mm. And Chris has aligned himself with her, you know, there was some, they had some conversations together. And I think they will form an alliance because Danielle and Winston, they've gone now. They've gone in their own little world. Ta-da. Th is this going to be a new power alliance, do you reckon? Could be. Uh, I don't think it could be a power alliance, no. But Or if it is, it's going to be one of those kind of uh, negative it, powers, you know. Go on, Louisa, go on. I think it could. I think, I think they could so. really get in there and start yeah. manipulating everything. Because mm -hmm. they kind of control from a distance. That's Right. Um, it, they're not loud, but they're very manipulative, and I think it could be a but really Chris good But Chris likes to come alliance. across as a good guy, and I'm not sure yeah, but that's gonna... why I think Do you remember when distance. he had the power, how sneaky he, he was? He was like, Mah. But do you know what, what we, we <laughs> did <laughs> see? <laughs> do you know what we did see? Obviously, when Toya took her under her wing whilst Toya was in there, uh, she left some instructions with her when she left. You know, remember what I told you, mm. remember what I told you. Uh, is she channeling Toya? Do you know what? Let's forget about Toya. Toya's done. You know, no. No. Oh, she's not even cold! No, but she keeps bringing in Toya, and Ashley is her own person. Yes, Toya gave us some instructions, but Ashley was that same person before Toya was You there. reckon? Yes. Matt, do you think she's going to be in the firing line next week? Yeah, I have a worried feeling that she may go, but... I think would you have put her up this week? No, I wouldn't have. If she, if she gets put up, she'll be out of the house. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't I, don't think yeah. I think Ash may be up again. I don't so think knows. she'll go. Yeah. I think they'll put her up, but I hope that the British public keeps Ashley in. Because mm -hmm. she's the only entertainment, really. What does she need to do to avoid nomination? I don't think she can avoid nomination. I think that she's going to be up, but I hope that you all vote for her to stay in. Uh, Rachel, what advice would you give her this week to try and turn it around a bit? Um, I'd say lighten up. Lighten up, enjoy it. You're, you know, you're young. What we want to see you doing is having fun. Yeah. Yeah. Funky, would you go along I with that? I totally agree with Rachel. Lighten up, have some fun, interact. They all need more. to lighten up and have fun, mm -hmm. though, don't mm -hmm. they? Right, mm -hmm. bunch. It's it's it is quite. They are. It's, it's you are quite a miserable yeah. lot this year. Oh, There's yeah, a lot of misery. Why, was there no joy in the house well, when you're really, in there? To be honest, it was bloody boring. Where do you think that came from? Because Who's everyone wanted that? to have alcohol every single night. Right. All they were ever doing was chain smoking, talking about sex the whole time. Well, you've been in there. Tell us. Tell us now, and we will sort it out. What do we need to do to make that house a funner house? Replace well, the half the house. <laughs> that's slightly. <laughs> that's slightly out of our remit. If you could go back in and stir it up a little bit and bring some joy to enjoy in there, what would you do? 
rip Helen's weave out of her hair, probably. Oh, no, no, I don't no. think, I don't think we're going to be able to do that. We can't do oh, that, that one. Show. Oh, thank you, oh, everyone. No, no, give me a round of applause. Yeah, nice bit of chat again. Well done. Oh, no, listen, here's all the diary room stuff that weren't good enough for the main show, but we love it. So, diary room uncut. What a disastrous day in the Big Brother house. I've got no Kim. I want a pancake ass, so I'm having to put the squats in. Um, no respect. I think I'm a food baby that needs to be aborted. I feel very, very full right now. No food, no cigarettes, no refreshments. Uh, happy fingers, shall we? What? Happy fingers. <sighs> oh, yeah, they were not happy fingers. I've missed all the sun. I've, I've, we've lost the shopping task. If you went, I'd be like, who the hell is it, my friend in this house? Like, yeah. who's gonna sit on my bed and just talk to me and keep me up early hours in the morning? <laughs> who's gonna drag me into the pool when I don't want to do it? Yeah. Who's gonna blow dry my hair, my hair in ways I don't want to do? <laughs> who's gonna add spice to my food that I want to be mild? Who's gonna pester me and annoy me and stop me from saying no to everything? No one. I'm not really gonna have any friends if this one leaves. No. But I really, I can't know. But honestly, it hasn't even, like, passed my mind that he met to go because Mark is a safe one. I've lost the shopping task for myself and for me and Ash and as Jale, although temporarily. Chris and I kind of go on like an old married couple. We climb into bed. It's a loveless, sexless relationship and we just sit there nattering about nattering about the day. Chris in his dressing gown after he's come in from a cigarette. Me after brushing my teeth and applying anti bath gel. All my clothes are dirty. I've got marks everywhere, my suit's still got red wine on them, I'm running out of toothpaste. Between 12 o'clock and now I've had about 45 shits. And halfway from, so about, from about, yeah. And half of those shits have been just water. I miss my family. I don't know who I am, like who is this fella, who is this character? Is he from England or is he from Italy or France? What does he do for the job? I look like I'm, I look, I look like I've, um been dipped in a pot of white emulsion. Can I have a secret task where if I achieve it, my barber can come and he can cut my hair, please? Because I look, I really need my hair cut now. She's gave me a little joke. Like, I really need a haircut. This is a disaster. This is a disaster. I don't know who I am anymore. I'm having an identity crisis. So this, cut, oh gosh, I've had a bit of a makeover. Jale's done me face. Clothes are not models own. Clothes belong to Jal's. They're not mine, so... What, do you like my new look? Is it doing it for you, Big Brother? Ah. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Helen. <laughs> Donkey, stop no. flirting! No, no, no. He's got a girlfriend! Stop flirting with him, for goodness oh, sakes! Man. Stay tuned! Oh, Stay tuned to find out why the house makes are feeling festive, plus I'm going up to the reality gallery. See you in a bit. Welcome back to Big Brothers Beer on the Strike. And we've been blowing minds since 2012. I don't like this. It's frightening. <laughs> Here's today's news. <laughs> At 12.41 this afternoon, Stephen made his feelings about Kimberly pretty clear. Do you think you could fall in love with Kimberly? Uh, yeah, I do, maybe. I'm going to look like such a twat on this. <laughs> I do sometimes think that, you know. I know you probably say I don't, but I do feel like a cheesy dick. A cheesy twat, actually. Um, I think I'm already falling in love with her. Not fallen, but falling. I, can feel, I know, I can feel it. It's like when she's upset, it makes me a bit upset. And when she, um, when she needs, uh, when she's sick, it makes me feel like... I want to make sure she's okay, and I know when she's and, that, and also I notice that whenever I'm down, she knows straight away, and she comes sit next to me and talk to me about it or something. But if, in answer to your question, if you ask me, could you fall in love with Kimberly? The answer is yes. If you ask me, are you falling in love with Kimberly? The answer is yes as well. I think I am. I think I am falling in love with her. And listen, if you ask me, if you think this is going to lead to even more awkward chat between them, I'd say yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cheesy twat. <laughs> uh, all right, then on my words, it's written in the orc here. I like Stephen. Uh, at 12.49 this afternoon, Ash and Winston seem pretty frustrated with just how 
hard it can be in the house. I don't think I've ever been this horny before. Yeah. I probably have, but I've just fucking... It's, it's you know all I mean? different in it, fucks. You just can't do anything, can you? Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Imagine coming out and just getting a bird the next night. Mint. I had a, just a fucking boner all night last night. Did you? Yeah. Pissing me off. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, spoon, I was like, she must feel this in her back. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say it? Yeah. She hit, when she, she hit it at one point, I went, what's that? And then I just went, oh, and then she just burst out laughing. <laughs> <laughs> You know what, girls? I think it's only a matter of time before uh, one of them comes to blows. <laughs> uh, and finally, at 2.53 this afternoon, the task today was quite festive. Uh, Christopher had uh, to take on the role of good old Father Christmas. I just want to see my baby standing right outside my door. Oh, I just want you for my own. More than you could ever know. Make my wish come true. That'll do, Mark. Oh, baby, all I want for Christmas. Mark, that'll do. Is... Thank you, Mark. Thanks. Do you know what, right? In all fairness, I think Christopher does quite a good ventriloquist act now. I'm just a bit concerned where his hand might have been. Uh, and that's today's news. Uh, but let's find out what's really going on. Ian, what's going on? Ryland, were they, were they Mark's real legs then? I think so. He did look like a little puppet, didn't he? <laughs> he looked like the legs that Bernie Clifton has on his comedy ostrich. It's a, it's a joke for the dads there. <laughs> what's the, going on, Ian? For the older people. Well, they're celebrating Christmas. Their task involves them celebrating Christmas, and Mark is very worried. He's seriously concerned it's going to bring them bad luck that they've got the decorations up, because you're only supposed to have them for the 12 days of Christmas. So he's upset. And for winning the task, this is exciting, Christopher chose his naughty housemates. Have a guess who he chose. Go on. Helen, Marlon and Danielle. Marlon? Marlon. <laughs> and Helen, Marlon and Danielle, and they're not invited for the Christmas dinner uh... tonight. There's no, there's no meal finer than a Christmas dinner. Uh, and, and Helen is absolutely furious. You mean? I bet she's livid. She, and she is now saying she wished she'd shaved off all of Christopher's hair and his eyebrows, and she's going to put a mackerel in his shoe. Oh, Where's she going to get a mackerel from in the well, house? Well, I can't, can't afford a mackerel on that shopping budget. On that shopping they? budget. Oh, oh, ladies, here's something for you. Ash and Winston are discussing where they're going to go clubbing when they leave the house. Right. That's going to be a sexy night, isn't so it? So that'd be a lovely night out. Uh, <laughs> and finally, uh, Ashley is worried her boyfriend is missing her, and then confess she wants to get married in her twenties. Oh, isn't that nice? I love you. I'll see you next no, week. I've got Loads more, Ryland. Uh, bye, Ian. Give up for Ian. Bye. 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 Cheers, girls. Love you. Uh, right, it's time to get digital now. I believe uh, Ian, uh, digital Ian, Louisa and Matthew are over here. Guys, what's going down? All right. All right. Oh. Who'd have thought Mark was a better singer than you? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, We've got, Go a, we've got a great VT that's going online tomorrow, if you still want to do it. It's Ryland's Bite Size Sunday. No, not now. Oh, shit. No, no I never mind. No, uh, I'll do it, I'll do it. OK. Well, that'll be online tomorrow afternoon what else in we place got? of bots. Uh, we've got some tweets about the whole winston Danielle weird thing that's Go going on. on. Tamara oh. scrolled through her Twitter Tomorrow. feed and she said oh. the other day, she's rubbing his leg while everyone's talking about me. WTF, Danielle. WTF, Danielle. Tara, we're feeling for you, babes. We're feeling uh, for and you. And Louisa's got some more tweets Lolo. on the subject. Someone else said, Jacqueline Wheeler said, Winston should be with Tamara. Danielle needs to back off. She's not so innocent. <laughs> oh. um, someone called Lisa Heaven. That's a nice name, That's isn't it? Name. Said, I think Tamara should go back in the house just to stir things up. Got time for one quick one. So I do one on Ashley? We've got quick. Go, Someone go, said, go. I really like the ice queen. She's smart, honest, and simply says the truth. She stood up to the witch and is brave for that. Give it up for these guys. <laughs> uh, that's all we've got time for tonight. I want to say a big thank you to all of my guests and our audience. They were great tonight as well. I'm back on Monday with Louisa. Plus, Sally Morgan and Samantha Mumba is going to be here. We'll see you on Monday tonight. <laughs>